Philadelphia Experiment was a long time coming because um, I wanted to set something on, on uh, uh, Philadelphia, uh, but you kind of have to wait. <laughs> you can't be like, hey, can I set a piece on you? And just be all like, like a puppy, because <laughs> then it's going to take longer. So, so, you know what I mean? So, and so uh, uh, finally, um, she asked me to set a work, which I was happy about. And so, um, and I wanted to have something sp specific about um, Philadelphia. So, and you know, like, there's some great artists in Philadelphia, and I wanted to be about Philadelphia. You know what I mean? Because I'm very proud of Philadelphia. And so, uh, this was about you know acknowledging Philadelphia, acknowledging our culture, uh, you know, uh, acknowledging our struggle um, as a city, um, politically, economically. Uh, and to do it with Philadelphia, the premier, you know, dance company in in Philadelphia, um, yeah, that was that was a no brainer. To be to be extremely honest, I don't think there's a, another company that I know of who has this type of collaboration with street dancers, modern dancers, right, yeah. together. You know what I mean? Um, about the same work. Not trying to fuse, not trying to be like, oh, we're on some new stuff. You know, we invented something because, you know, people like, like, oh, we were the first to, this is what it was about us coming together as a community uh, of, of dancers who are black, regardless of the style, and then representing our community as a whole. Here in the, like, to me, here in the States, the, um, the pushback that I still feel is um, uh, we, we've become elitist about how we receive hip hop, you know, black and white. You know, um, we like to see this entertainment because when we look at hip hop culture, hip hop dance specifically today, what we're seeing today isn't hip hop dance; it's jazz. That's not hip hop to me, and I know that because I was around before it was called hip hop, so I know exactly what hip hop looks like, but. Again, same thing happened with jazz. What we know is jazz today is not really jazz. It's, it's, it's a, one, someone's interpretation, but it has a ballet foundation. You know, jazz is a street thing, it comes from the community. Today, like any other dance style, um, you know, I have a certain way that I move. So at some point, it's really not so much about Okay, it's hip hop. I think everyone outside of the the space is like, oh, it's hip hop, and he's putting it on his ballet or modern, and it's a big thing for, for me. Is I'm just coming in to create a work. Now, when I go in, the the issue really becomes how can that dancer remain bilingual? So if I'm teaching you a language, let's think it from, from let's look at it from the ling uh, linguistic perspective. If I'm teaching you another language. And most people, let's say I was teaching you Spanish, most people begin to speak Spanish or start off trying to speak Spanish with an English grammatical structure, right? And so that's what I'm, I'm fighting against. And once I can get them to be, you know, conversational Spanish, right? My hope, because I'm not with them, is that they continue to, to practice conversational uh, um, Spanish. But sometimes their language, their own language, overrides the new language giving them an accent, okay. okay? And so then it looks completely different than what it is I'm, I, I gave them the first time working with them. Now, same thing for me, if I did modern dance, I would look the same, I would have an accent, I would try, be, you know. But now here's the thing, because someone like Philodenko, a group like Philodenko, comes from the same community that I come from, there's a connector already. Because a lot of the same movement that I may use they may do at the club, and they, they do in general in the community, right? And so this is where I begin to like pull that out and, then, and push that, and then put a little bit of my specific style lies version of street dance on them, right? Along with stuff that they understand culturally. And that's how that works specifically if we're talking about Philodanko specifically.
right? Because uh, they're coming from the same cultural background. Now, this is harder if it's a, a ballet company or another modern dance company that doesn't come from my background, right? It's a whole different culture. That becomes a whole different thing. The same uh, dancers, or ballet modern dancers, don't know who Don Campbell is or Boogaloo Sam or any of the people who pioneered the movement I'm teaching them or Emilio Austin, right? And so often when I'm teaching or I'm creating these works, I'm also giving a lecture at the same time. Say, hey, well, this movement came from so-and-so and this is why this is important. You know, so I'm kind of doing two things at the same time as I'm creating. You know, what I'm creating for you is something that was solicited. You know what I mean? And so I have to figure out how to make it work for you and keep you and your integrity and in what it is that you want. And, and I used to take it personal, like this is my artistic vision and blah, blah, blah. But then I realized, no, my artistic vision really is for me and my company. You know what I mean? And then as you get older, you realize, oh, you just need a little bit sofrito. You just need a little bit of flavor and a little bit of spice. You don't really have to throw all that black pepper on it. You know what I mean? You don't really have to go in ham, you know, and just... Those moments help because that's what changes the, the political um, climate. The youth is what changes the political climate because they're n n naive or uh, less experienced and just kind of emotion, raw emotion, sometimes just like changes things. It's the older dance, it's the, my generation and the generation above me that is like, well, in the very beginning would tell me, well, Rennie, that's not hip hop. And I was like, no, yes it is. And I could prove it, you know what I mean? Like, hey, it, it is, you just don't, you're not aware. You know, I'm giving them hip hop movement. How they interpret it is their language at that. You know what I mean? Like hip hop or street dance is very complex. You can't really, it's, it, it's exi existing and not existing at the same time. I very rarely actually do hip hop. I, I, I teach and collab, I use house movement. But people call it hip hop, but it's not hip hop, it's house. You got me? So for me, I feel like part of my thing is to help people understand the differences of different, the different styles. When, when I say street dance, that's what I mean. It's a, it's, a, it's a plethora of different, you know, from locking, popping, breaking, hip hop, second line, go-go, uh, um, hyphy, um, uh, light foot or light feet, um, Harlem Shake style, uh, versus um, uh, get, getting dumb, um, versus footwork style in Chicago, versus crumping in LA, versus bopping in Long Beach, like all these different street dance styles, but everyone puts it under, they just call it hip hop, right? And it's not necessarily true. There's only one style, one dance that's called hip hop, and that was uh, the party dances. And those dances from gate come up, they're already codified because they're popular party dances. So the nay nay, the, the the whip, these things, you know, they are probably sorry. That's what hip hop dance. Everything else isn't. Those are all <laughs> like popping, locking, and breaking was done to funk music. Hip hop hadn't been invented yet, so it can't be hip hop. You know what I mean? Yes. The music, the music itself was being created in the seventies. They were rhyming over funk and disco. They weren't rhyming over hip hop beats. Hip hop beats had been created. 